it is time to get into the New Testament, which talks about the life and ministry of Jesus and the events that happened after Jesus' ministry. Today we're going to look at a little over half of the New Testament, so let's get right into it. Start with the Gospels, Book 1, Matthew. Matthew Gospel, Matthew's Gospel comes first because of the way it connects with the Old Testament. The truth is, Matthew writes to a Jewish audience. He himself was Jewish, so the way that he wrote was unique, and that his main purpose, purpose was to prove to Jews that Jesus was the Messiah who was promised in the Old Testament. Some clutch facts that we need to know about Matthew. He quotes the Old Testament 53 times and reference, references it an additional 76 times. He uses a lot of Old Testament language, too. He includes a family tree, something that uh, the Jesus community, the Jewish community, would have valued. He uses a lot of Jewish lingo, so again, easier to connect with them. And he wrote his gospel about 30 to 35 years after Jesus was resurrected, about 65 AD. And by this time, he was a leader in the early church. So, a couple of the popular passages that you would know: the Christmas story, Matthew 1 through 1, 1 through 25. The Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 3 through 10, and the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Next is Mark, book 2. One of the things that's easy to notice about Mark is how busy Jesus seems. Mark leaves out the birth story and just launches right into Jesus' work. So some clutch facts about Mark is that it's the shortest gospel, 16 chapters, written by a non-disciple to a Gentile or non-Jewish option or audience. He emphasizes Jesus' act, act, actions, not his teachings. And it's probably one of the earliest Gospels written, about 55 AD. Some think that Matthew and Luke actually may have used Mark's Gospel as one of their sources during their own research. The next book is Book 3, Luke. The only Gentile author, again, meaning he's just not Jewish. He came to faith in Christ and traveled with Paul. Luke was a doctor, a Greek, and a very nerdy historian. He researched and considered his writings before doing so, making the style very reliable for us. His gospel is written to the Gentiles in general, but it could also be directed to one person or a group of people. And as we mentioned, he also wrote X, because, and because he also wrote X, and because he wrote this before X, we can date this book about 60 AD. And one of the themes that Luke focuses on is the influence of the Holy Spirit. And this shows in both his gospel and Acts. He pays close, attentions, uh, pl pays close attention to Jesus' early life. And this is as close to a complete biography of Jesus as we get in the gospels. Before the New Testament, John goes away from the norm. The purpose of John's gospel is less historic, more evangelistic. Some cool facts about John is that uh, John is the only one that says that Jesus' ministry lasted three years. Almost half of his gospel focuses on the last week of Jesus' life. It's assumed to be the last gospel written about 85 AD. He was a disciple, but also part of the inner circle that gives us otherwise unknown info. It contains the words from Christ on the cross, as he was the only disciple present there. The conversation of Jesus with the disciples in the upper room before he dies is unique to this gospel. 90% of John is unique and isn't duplicated by another author. John doesn't mention the genealogy, the birth, the childhood, the temptation, the transfiguration, the parables, the ascension, or the great commission of Jesus. And this all leads us to the book of Acts, book 5. Luke, who Luke wrote, and as a traveler with Paul during his, or as a traveler with Paul, he records the early history of the church after Jesus' resurrection. This was written somewhere between 60 and 70 AD, and it focuses on Peter for the first few chapters before it moves over to Paul. It's the only New Testament history book. With the exception of Revelation, the rest of the New Testament fits into the time frame that is in Acts. Book six, we see Romans, Paul's first letter. Romans is one of the most theologically intense books. Paul writes it to the church in Rome to set some things straight as well to announce that he would be visiting. Like many of his letters, though, it may have ended up being passed around, so it has meaning for all of us. Paul wrote this about 57 AD. Next is the Corinthians' letter, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, book 7 and 8. Paul wrote these letters to the church at Corinth. His purpose was to show them some of the problems there and to counsel them towards solutions and then celebrate their progress. 
Paul founded his, this church on an earlier journey, but he writes these letters on his third journey in 55 AD. Next is Galatians, book 9. This is one of the earliest letters Paul wrote, about 49 AD. Galatians are a group of churches that were similar to how like we would label the South and the Northwest. The theme is that the free gift of sal salvation through Jesus. Jews who were becoming Christians were saying that Gentiles needed to be Jewish before they were Christian, and a claim that Paul, a Jew himself, battles in his letter. Book 10 is Ephesians. This was written about 60 AD to the church in Ephesus. This letter may have been meant to circulate through various churches, and the theme is the unity in the body of Christ. Book 11 is Philippians. This letter was meant to encourage and actually thank the church in Philippi. He wrote it from jail in Rome about 61 AD, just a year or so after he wrote Ephesians. And his theme is joy, which is kind of ironic considering his imprisoned state, but the church in Philippi the church in Philippi was the very first church he established in Asia, and it held a very close place in Paul's heart. And the final book we're going to talk about today is Colossians, book 12, written about 60 AD to the church in Colossae. And the purpose was to just correct the errors in the theology held by some in that city. Whew. So we're a little over halfway through the New Testament. Next week we're finishing it off. Great job for making it this far. In my opinion, this is a lot easier to take in than the Old Testament stories, but just as necessary to learn. So feel proud. As always, we'll see you in the next session, and stay blessed.